1968, the Non-Proliferation Treaty came into being and with it the desire to reduce the number of nuclear weapons. An opportunity presented itself with the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991. At that time, it was not just the newly independent Russia that inherited nuclear weapons from the Soviet Union, but also Belarus with over 100 nuclear weapons, Kazakhstan with over 1,400, and Ukraine with nearly 9,000. Ukraine further possessed 176 SS-19 and SS-24 intercontinental ballistic missiles, which were manufactured in Ukraine, each with a yield between 400 and 550 kilotons and 44 strategic bombers. To put this into context, the bomb used to destroy Hiroshima had a yield of around 15 kilotons and the bomb launched against Nagasaki, 21 kilotons. Of course, maintenance of nuclear weapons is not cheap, and with leaders now more focused on the economy and providing a reasonable standard of living for its citizens, then the latter three former Soviet republics were keen to use them as bargaining tools. Nuclear weapons came with risks too, an accident could potentially cause a major catastrophe, and I look at such accidents with weaponry in a separate video. Therefore, it made sense to get rid of them, but in exchange for the security that the weapons purported to provide. Belarus and Kazakhstan transferred their nuclear arsenals to Russia. Ukraine also considered this approach, but at the end of the day, Russia, as the successor state of the Soviet Union, effectively held all the infrastructure for the weapons and had operational control over them too. Ukraine could have requested gaining operational control over all or some of the weapons, but for obvious reasons of cost, decided to destroy the weapons it held. In exchange for disposing of its nuclear deterrent, Ukraine wanted three things. The first was that it wanted financial compensation for the value of the highly enriched uranium in the nuclear warheads, which, once processed, could be used as fuel in nuclear reactors. Russia agreed to this. The second point is that in eliminating the missiles and all the equipment that comes with it is very expensive. With the economy in freefall, the Ukrainian government requested financial assistance to remove this weaponry and the United States stepped in with the cash. The third point was that it had given up its deterrent and therefore requested security assurances which came in the form of the Budapest Memorandum which was signed on the 5th of December 1994 by Leonid Kuchma for, the, for Ukraine Boris Yeltsin for Russia, John Major for the United Kingdom, and Bill Clinton for the United States. The points of the Budapest Memorandum are the following. 1. Respect Belarusian, Kazakh and Ukrainian independence and sovereignty in the existing borders. 2. Refrain from the threat or the use of force against Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine. 3. Refrain from using economic pressure on Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine to influence their politics. 4. Seek immediate Security Council action to provide assistance to Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine if they should become a victim in an act of aggression or an object or a threat of aggression in which nuclear weapons are used. 5. Refrain from the use of nuclear arms against Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine. 6. Consult with one another if questions arise regarding those commitments. On the 7th of December 1994, this was lodged with the United Nations and entitled the Memorandum on Security Assurances in Connection with Ukraine's Accession to the Treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. 
The declaration was circulated as a document of the General Assembly and signed by Anatoly Slenko for Ukraine, Sergei Lavrov for Russia, David Hanay for the United Kingdom and Madeleine Albright for the United States. Incidentally, that is the same Sergei Lavrov who lodged this memorandum, who is today the Foreign Minister of Russia. As I'm sure any lawyer would point out, there is no clause stating what the consequences would be for any signatory who broke the agreement. Indeed, the United Kingdom and the United States could argue that since they have not invaded Ukraine, they have not broken the word of the agreement and that their responsibility is limited to seeking immediate Security Council action. However, many would argue that both of these countries have broken the spirit of the agreement in doing next to nothing to support Ukraine and the territorial integrity of that country. If you've got any comments, the comment section is below. Thanks for listening.